we're going to begin our inference on two population parameters with a hypothesis test for the difference between two population proportions. Now in the calculator, that's called a two prop Z test, but of course it'll be called something different on StatCrunch and I'll show you that in just a minute. Now, if you're looking at these requirements, they look familiar. There's a little bit more to them than before. So you still need a random sample, of course, right? Simple random sample from both groups because, of course, they need to be independent of each other. So you have two samples measured, well, or two separate groups measured once, right? So think of that, two separate groups measured once. You have to add that in. That's new. We didn't have to do that before in chapters um, 9 and 10. So that's the new piece. And then we need the samples to be independent of the population, which is a different thing. Um, if you're sampling without replacement, then you need the little sample size to be less than 0.055% of the population size for both groups. Now, if you're sampling with replacement, which is pretty rare, but if you are, then that's automatically independent. We don't even have to think about it. We only worry when we are sampling without replacement. And then, of course, n times p1 times q1 must be greater than or equal to 10. And n times p2 times q2 must be greater than or equal to 10, where q1 and q2 are the complements of p1 and p2. Right? That's the probability of success, probability of failure we learned about in the binomial distribution in Chapter 6, more or less. All right. So that looks very familiar. It's just larger. We have to do it twice. Everything has to be done twice down here. And then we have this new component right there. And then it looks a lot like it has before. We determine our null and alternative hypotheses. We get our alpha. We find a test statistic. We draw a picture. We make a decision based on our p-value and we state our conclusion. So let's do an example and hopefully and in doing that example, it'll help us all figure out what's going on. And of course, as always, that entire table does not have to be memorized. It's right on your exam notes packet. So there it is. You can have it. All right. Apnea prematurity is, um, oh, is, <laughs> is defined. Sorry. I lost a, I'll have to add that in there. Is defined as cessation of breathing that lasts for more than 15 seconds and is accompanied by hypoxia and bradycardia. Occurs, um, oh, actually, it wasn't that it's, that it's an is, it's that it's, um, there's a hyphen there. So apnea of prematurity, defined as a, a, occurs in at least 85% of infants who are born at less than 34 weeks of gestation. So I don't know if you noticed that, but there's prematurity in there because these are for preemie babies, for babies that are born um, early, right? Um, less than 34 weeks of gestation. One therapy for this condition is to give caffeine to the premature infants. Medical researchers conduct an international study in which one sample of premature infants was randomly assigned to receive caffeine therapy, and another sample re received a placebo therapy. Now, to do that, the doctors actually, or the nurses, have to go in and basically do all the same motions and everything, but not give the caffeine. They give it something else instead that would not hurt the baby at all. It's a placebo. Now, researchers compare the rate of needing supplemental oxygen at 36 weeks between the two groups to determine whether the caffeine group would need less oxygen than the placebo group. Because, of course, you're trying to get the baby's lungs to grow because these babies were born prematurely, so you want them to need less oxygen. That means they're getting more oxygen in their system. Now, the caffeine group included 963 infants, of which 350 needed oxygen at week 36. And the placebo group of 954 infants had 447 that needed oxygen at week 6. Interesting. Okay, so our first mission in life is to figure out our P1 hat and our P2 hat. Excuse me. All right, well, let's see here. We have one group right here, the caffeine group. And we're going to let group one be the caffeine group because it says so. <laughs> no, no good reason for it otherwise. There's, there's no advantage to being group one or group two. All right. So we know from chapter eight that P hat is X over N. So since this is group one, it'll be X one over N one. That just means you're in group one. Now X one for group one was 350 and N one was 963. And of course, we can grab a calculator or we can grab Desmos and find what that value is. 
I just grabbed the calculator. So I'm going to take 350 and divide by 963, and I get 0.3634, roughly. And then now the other group is the placebo group. And the placebo group had 954 infants, and of, excuse me, of which 447 needed oxygen at week 36. So that would be X2 over N2, which is 447 over 954, which of course I'm going to grab a calculator for as well. So 447 divided by 954, and we get 0.4686 if we round to four decimal places. And here's a graph of them so you can see. This is the caffeine group. So after 36 weeks, this is the percentage that needed no oxygen, which is like 63% or so, and or 64%, and 36%. That's what we just found right here. This is 0.36. 3, 4 right there. That's the height of that. And then, of course, this would be the complement of that, right? Because they had to make 100% of the group up. And then we're learning that over here is 0. 0.4686. That's the height of that group. That's still in oxygen. All right. Now, hypothetically speaking, what is the good outcome for the premature infants at 36 weeks? What's the thing we want? Well, we want them to not need oxygen, right? We want the, the light gray bars. So no oxygen. Because it means the baby's lungs are developing, right? So they don't need supplemental oxygen. And they're perhaps no longer experiencing apnea where they stop breathing while they're um, sleeping or just existing. It means baby's lungs are developing and apnea where they stop breathing is stopping or ending. Right? Here's a hint. You want your babies to breathe. Apnea is a bad thing, right? So you do not want apnea. So you want the babies to be breathing the whole time. So if they don't need supplemental oxygen, that's a good thing, right? Because so no, they don't need supplemental oxygen means that their lungs are developing and their apnea is ending, they're breathing fine, right? So, so no supplemental oxygen means that they're breathing well. And that's just to keep track of what's happening. That, that, there's, if you're wondering where's the statistics in that question, not necessarily any, but you're just trying to keep track of what's going on here and what you're looking for. All right, next, we want to verify the requirements needed. So number one, we need both groups to be random. And it says right away, it says that um, researchers compared the need of, I've got to find it in here somewhere. Oh, there it is, randomly assigned right here, right? So they were randomly assigned to the treatments, right? And so therefore, um, it's given to us, right? Given the groups are random. They're taking preemie infants, and this is a real study. Um, they took preemie infants, and then they randomly assigned caffeine to see if it would improve their breathing and make it so they don't have apnea. Next, we want the samples to be independent of each other. Let me read what it says. It says independent samples. So we got the random, no problem. Independent samples, the samples are independent of each other. Well, that's definitely true because they were two separate groups of preemies. Right, so what, what happens with one preemie doesn't affect the next preemie, right? So two separate groups of random preemies measured once at the 36 week mark. Preemies, of course, meaning premature infants, measured once. When you have two separate groups measured once at 36 weeks, then that is independent. Wonderful. All right, so we've got that. Next, this is the stuff where everything gets doubled. So we need them to be independent of the population. 
And this is a little bit hand wavy, but bear with me here. So we have to know that N1, which is, uh, let's see, N1 was 963. Actually, I'm going to do this in the same color. That way it'll help kind of clarify this for you all. So we want N1, which was 963, to be less than 0 0.05 capital N1. Let me just kind of write that that way. And furthermore, we want N2 to be less than or equal to 0 0.05 capital N2. Okay, well, N1 would be 937. Is that less than 0 0.05? And then, of course, N1 and N2 are kind of the same group out of this because they're just preemies. This is technically all preemies in the world that could be see receiving caffeine therapy, and this is all preemies that maybe could receive placebo, but it's, it's basically all preemies. Well, there's a lot of preemies born every year, so, and we're just going to say, well, of course, right? sure <laughs> this seems fine all right and this is 932 is less than 0 0.05 and again of all preemies and so that's of course all right so that was done and it's a little hand wavy but we've done that before where we're just kind of saying well sure it is right? we didn't take all the preemies in the world there's way more than that being born now for normal, we need N1, and you need to do everything twice. N1, P1 hat, Q1 hat has to be greater than or equal to 10. And furthermore, actually let me separate this just so you guys can see. Right, there's two, there's two things going on for each of these. We need N2, P2 hat times Q2 hat to be greater than or equal to 10. Okay, N1 was 937. P1 hat we found on the previous page. And it was, oh, we found it up here. It wasn't the previous page, it's right there. 0 0.36. I'm just going to kind of abbreviate this. 0 0.36. And then this would be the complement of that, which is 0 0.64. And to do that, I'm just doing the math in my head, but you can also do it here and say 1 minus 0 0.36. See, 0.64. And while I'm on the subject, the other one's 0 0.47, 0 0.469 if you want to be specific. So 1 minus 0.47, that's close enough, is 0.53. All right, so I need 937 times 0 0.36 times 0 0.64. And I need that to be bigger than 10. Oops, except I need there to be a 4 in there. I pressed the button, but it didn't take it. There you go. So that's 215. 215.9 is indeed bigger than 10. So that's a yes, right? So we have these ones. And then I was setting us up for that just with the calculator a second ago. So this is 900, um, oh, 954. Oh my goodness, not 932. Oh, I messed both of these up. This wasn't 937. This was 963. I don't know where I got that number from. All right, sorry about that. 963, 963. Let's do that again. All right, so 963 times 0.36. I'm just going to go grab this and make that 963 the correct number. Oh, my goodness. There we go, 221. 221.9, or point, yeah, 0.9. It's even worse. <laughs> 221.9, it's still bigger than 10. So we're good there. And then over here, this was not 932. This was 954 still bigger than that so that's no problem so 954 times and this was 0.47 and this was 0.53 that's what I had us figuring out up above so then 954 times 0.47 times 0.53 makes 237.6 which indeed is way bigger than 10 especially when you use the right numbers <laughs> so we're good there Sorry about that. All right, so 963 was N1, 954 is N2, 0 0.47, 0 0.36. It's fine to round these. It's not going to um, be make or break, unless you're super close to 10 and you think maybe unrounding it will put you over the top, then by all means, go ahead for it. But um, otherwise, for something like this, this was so huge, it's fine. All right, so we have our requirements all verified. So now we actually just have to run the hypothesis test.